All right, so the first mod we have on today's list is going to be the Alien Rifle mod. I've never covered this mod, I believe. So this is gonna be a newer mod to me. So the Alien Rifle mod essentially, so if y'all remember, there is a Alien Rifle that you can scan in one of the precursor bases later on in the game. Uh, I believe it's like in the in the uh, disease research facility. I might be wrong on that, but there's an Alien Rifle that you can scan down there, but you can't actually use it in the game. So this mod adds that Alien Rifle into the game and it allows you to actually craft it so you can use it. So let me shoot a stalker with this, see if it gets it instantly. And the stalker is dead, just like that. Okay, so I wonder how much damage this thing actually does. I would test it on a Leviathan, but I don't know if I feel like. All right, we got a Reaper Leviathan right here, and we're gonna test this alien rifle out on him. Okay, he took one shot. Okay. I don't even know if I hit him right there. Where the heck is he going? That's another shot. Hit him again. Okay, this thing doesn't do an insane amount of damage. I shot this Reaper like at least four times with this thing and he is still kicking. Other than that, the alien rifle isn't really like practical. It's more of like a fun item to use and not really like something practical that you would actually use, want to use during a playthrough and whatnot. So that's why it ended up at the 10th spot on today's list. But yeah, with the alien rifle done, we can head on to the ninth spot on today's list. So coming in at number nine, we have the map mod. Very simple yet effective mod. So the mod, all the does is it adds a little mini map that you can look at if you go to if you pull up your pda and you go to the beacon manager over here uh there's like a little toggle section on the top right corner you can toggle between your beacons and then the map so as you explore around the map and whatnot it'll pick up the area that you go over so since i've been you know over in that little grassy plateaus area so now if we look at the map because i've went around we can see that it picked up a whole lot of you know terrain and whatnot so you have to stay near the actual floor biome that you're in for the map to actually pick up you can't just go along the surface and as you're going around the terrain if you pass a certain landmark as we can see i passed a few wrecks we got this wreck right here and it even tells you the depth of the wreck so this one's 76 meters we got one over here is 23 meters 24 25 36 23 sea moth life pond so any major landmarks that you pass they'll pick up on the map and they'll automatically mark it and show you the depth so that's also pretty awesome and whenever you're hovering over a certain spot let's just go to this wreck right here we go to this wreck it'll show me the coordinates of the spot that i'm looking at the way the map looks it's not like some basic map it's, it's like super detailed so i really like that as well but yeah map the map mod is number nine on today's list and with that we can head on to the next mod all right so the next mod on today's list is going to be the hull reinforcement fix mod and i made a whole video on why i thought the hull reinforcement upgrade was completely useless and garbage and whatnot this mod completely fixes the hull reinforcement and makes it actually useful as we all know the hull reinforcement module in the base game of subnautica only reduces collision damage for both the pronsu and the sea moth so it'll only reduce damage if you're bumping into stuff and given how open subnautica is the chances of you just bumping in like randomly bumping into stuff are slim to none unless you're in like a tight cave our vehicle fabricator in our moon pool and we check the fabricator we go to common modules we'll see the trash hull reinforcement right here this one is the bad one this one you don't want and then under it we'll see the ones that the mod adds we have the mark 2 hull reinforcement and we have the mark 3 hull reinforcement these two are actually good because they actually reduce overall damage whether you're colliding into things or whenever you're taking damage from creatures all right we're gonna test this on a reaper leviathan and we're gonna let a reaper leviathan grab me we're gonna observe how much damage the reaper deals to me without the hull reinforcement module on and then we're gonna observe how much damage it does when i do have the new hole reinforcement on and we're gonna see the difference let it watch he does about eight damage per tick and we can see he's doing a lot of damage to me right now 24 okay let go you're gonna you're gonna destroy my vehicle now oh my thank you grab me grab 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 grab, grab me don't stop stop weaving me bro grab me all right as you can see i'm only taking four damage per hit down to 78 73 69 64 60 57 he was doing almost half damage compared to what he was doing when i didn't have this whole reinforcement module on which is what the base game whole reinforcement should do so this mod essentially it takes the base game whole reinforcement all the issues with that and it fixes it by actually making it reduce damage instead of just trash collision damage that you know barely anybody's gonna collide into stuff with and yeah with that we can head on to our next mod all right so the next mod we have on today's list is going to be the vanilla expanded mod coming in at number seven doesn't add like 
like a crazy amount to the game but it does add a few new things and as we can see one of the main things it adds right here is going to be the large solar panel it's going to not only produce more energy you know like more solar energy from the sun but it's also going to do that at a faster rate and as far as interior modules go it does add some new stuff over the interior of your base so we have the cabinet which has nine by nine storage space and it is larger than a locker and as we can see it's right here it also has its own animation when you open it that's very nice i really like that and then we have the sci-fi crate seven by eight storage space and it's also a little larger than the space that a locker has it also has its own animation when you open it all pretty cool and then we have the locker giving us six by eight which is you know standard and then finally we have the battery what was i about to say we have the battery power generator you can only put regular power cells in because it won't take the ion power cells so just keep that in mind but whenever you have the power cell inside it'll just it'll instantly start generating energy for your base all pretty nice now the other thing about this mod that i would like to mention is the fact that the mod creator this is not all that's going to be in the mod and they are planning to add some more stuff to this mod as i was reading on the nexus website what was it i think it was some turrets that you can put on the outside of the base and you they're also planning on adding a base attack system i guess it will like change the behavior of the creatures in the game so that they would come over like every so often and attack your base randomly and you would have to defend your base you know it's going to add some sort of tower defense element to subnautica which sounds pretty cool be on the lookout for that that is the vanilla expanded mod and with that we can move on to number six on this list all right so coming in at number six we are going to be looking at the resource monitor mod now what this mod essentially does is it adds two new buildables for your base we have the resource monitor large and we have the resource monitor small you see the difference between these two one's big one's not but what this mod does it adds this resource monitor to your your base and whenever you build it in your base no matter what you put in your base so let's say i have like a locker on the other side of my base which i do right now because there's no lockers in here and that locker is filled with items it'll show you all the different resources that you have in your base and whatnot and there's different pages so if you have a lot of stuff you'll just have to cycle through the pages to see all your resources and the other cool thing is not only does it show you all your resources you can also walk up to the monitor and all you have to do is click and you can just take whatever resource you're looking at from the monitor and it'll go straight to your inventory. I really, really like this mod because it saves you a ton of time. You know, it saves you the trip from having to not only look through all your lockers to figure out what you need, but it also saves you the trip of having to open your lockers in the first place to pick out all the items that you need before you go out on like a trip or whatever. You can just simply look at the resource monitor and pick and choose what items you need and just move on about your day. That was the resource monitor mod at number six. And with that, we can head on to number five, getting into the mods that I really, really like. All right, so the next mod we have at number five is going to be the epic weather mod. So as we can see, and as we all know, Subnautica does not have any like unique weather events. The only thing it does have is the solar eclipse that sort of happens like once every, like in a blue moon moon or whatever the heck yeah this big old moon will go in front of the sun and it'll make the map dark for like a few seconds so what this mod does is it adds a bunch of new weather events to the game so let's just type weather so as we can see it adds the clear skies weather which is you know what we're looking at right now we have light rain thunderstorm golden thunderstorm we have the foggy weather and windy the golden thunderstorm is kind of funny i want to show you the thunderstorm because it's my favorite one is that weather thunderstorm and now we can see it's gonna start raining. The map's gonna get a little darker and we should be seeing some lightning in a few seconds. There it is, yeah. And the cool part about some of this weather is that it'll even affect you while you're underwater. So we can see the thunderstorms going on up here, above land and whatnot, but if we head down, the rain's not gonna come through obviously, but we can still see the lightning is flashing up the water. And if we turn to nighttime, we should be able to see the lightning a little better. Yep, see, it's the thunderstorm weather event and all the other weather events can still sort of affect you even while you're underwater because, you know, you can still hear the thunder and whenever it strikes, the map, you know, sort of lights up as we can see it's still doing right now because we're still in the thunderstorm. I don't think the lightning can strike you and actually hurt you, but, you know, it's, it's cool to speculate and think that it actually can. It makes the game a little more tense. But yeah, that was the epic weather mod pretty cool pretty cool and with that we can head on to number four on our list all right so coming in at number four on the list we have the true base colorizer mod i really really like this mod too because it allows you to alter the entirety of your base every part of it including the outside and the inside and also the different modules so i'm going to build some exterior modules to show you what i'm talking about so it's going to add this little base colors monitor that you can build inside of your base it also shows you the time whenever you're not near it as we can see so with this little panel here we can color 
We can um, change the color of the base exterior. We can change the color of the exterior modules, the glass. We can rename the base. We can change the lights, module interior, and the base interior. All right, so now that I've colorized my entire base, we can see the entirety of the moon pool has changed. The lights are all yellow slash this golden color now. We also have the black interior. And if we look at our interior modules, they can also be changed. I changed them to this like ugly color just because. So the interior modules can be changed. The lights of all these modules also change with the base and the outside of the base, like where you're really gonna be amazed as to how the base changes. So, all right, so as we can see, the exterior of our entire base has also been changed. We can see it's that nice color to match the inside. It's black, main color's black. And then we have the yellow. I use the thermal plants as a good example because they have a lot of lights on them. So we can see that they are black gold and then we have the power transmitters also change colors they look pretty awesome and the glass you can also change the color i said that was a big highlight because now whenever you look at it from the outside it almost looks like there's a force field around your base and it looks super awesome from a distance you just look at that look at the observatory observatory looks amazing now all lit up and super cool looking but yeah that is the true base colorizer mod and with that we can head on to our next mod all right so the next mod we have on today's list is going to be the remnants of life mod coming in at number three so what this mod does is it adds a little bit to subnautica's overall story and what happened to the survivors of the aurora like from the life pods and whatnot so this mod adds a few new survivor bases around the map that you can go around and explore it adds some new degasi bases and new biomes it also adds a new part of the void all right so this is one of the survivor bases that that this mod adds into the game the one i was talking about so the survivor bases look a little bit different than the you know regular like destroyed degasi bases because these bases are actually still intact because these are the bases built according to the mod i believe these are the bases built by the survivors of the aurora whenever they you know dipped out of their life pods and whatnot tried to survive on this planet this is what they built and obviously it didn't make it because you can see it's all beat up and whatnot this is supposed to be this door leads into a a little precursor structure that you can go in and explore and i'm just gonna phase through this wall because this is like just stuck in my way so we're inside and we can see this door requires a orange tablet there is some stuff up there that you can collect in this room i'm not going to show you because i don't want to spoil the entire mod for you in case you do want to experience it for yourself but yeah this is just an example of what this mod brings to the game brings some new precursor structures some new survivor bases that you can explore and some new degasi bases and it also adds parts of the void called the void steps so that's also pretty nice but yeah with that we can head on to the next mod on our list which is going to be number two for the top mods in subnautica Alrighty, didn't even have to go far so the next mod on this list is going to be the de-extinction mod this mod adds just like the remnants of life mod the remnants of life mod adds a ton of new structures and whatnot that you can explore to subnautica this mod the de-extinction mod adds a ton of new creatures that you can encounter into subnautica and to subnautica what there's a, a ton of creatures that you can encounter in subnautica so what we're looking at right now are the grand gliders which are found in a few biomes around the map all the all the creatures from this mod spawn naturally you know in different biomes throughout the game and there is a leviathan that this mod adds to i'll show you that in a second stellar thalassians over here they're like the freaking they're like the reef backs of this mod they essentially just swim around super slow they kind of just chill out they make super freaky noises and they look super cool doing it so yeah stellar thalassians and there's also a second version of them there's one found in these like surface level biomes and there's also one in the lost river biome so pretty awesome and the leviathan that i was talking about that this mod adds is called the gulp of leviathan i'm gonna go in invisible mode because even though i have the damage turned off he can still eat me which is pretty annoying but you know it's whatever so this is the new leviathan that this mod adds into subnautica it's called the gopher leviathan and what he essentially does is he gulps up anything and everything in his path our player the person the character that you're playing as is small enough for the gopher leviathan to simply just open his mouth and swallow him whole because he does it. he has a whole animation where he does it and there's a baby gopher leviathan that you can find randomly around the map i think he doesn't have like a specific spawn location it's kind of just like a, if you can find him then you know you find them and you can also pick them up that's also pretty nice i believe it's it's either 17 or 19 creatures that the de-extinction mod adds to subnautica so you are most definitely going to want to check this mod out all right here he comes come on man there we go and he 
And with that, we're going to move on to the number one mod on this list, in my opinion, and what I think is the top mod for Subnautica. And for the top mod on today's list, we are going to be looking at the seal submarine mod coming in at number one on this list but this is the biggest submarine mod that you know the general public can access because the other like super big submarine mod that i know of is the atlas but i'm pretty sure not everybody can get that mod it's only like certain people who have access to that mod yeah we have the massive seal submarine it has a big old docking bay in the back right here and you can dock your seamoth and your pond suit in here now the Seamoth is docked, we can move it around and whatnot, but whenever we get out, it's also, we can see it's being held together by this little, uh, I guess you can call it like an electromagnetic field, whatever your science-y terms would be for this, it's being held together by this electricity. Steel Submarine comes with its own upgrades, so we have the depth modules right here, we have the solar charger module, and then we have the speed and thermal charger module. All pretty nice. This thing runs on, what is this, one, two, three, four, five, runs on 10 power cells, so it's quite hefty on energy for you to actually build you can build in basically every part of the submarine even this little bay right here you can actually build stuff in you can build stuff in here submarine is highly customizable we have a hatch right here that we can get in and out of the submarine from the top and then we have the bridge you know the command center of the seal it's got a little area you can stand up here and it comes with its own little scanner room that you can move around you can move this map around and whatnot as far as i know you can't change the color of the seal submarine oh my gosh i'm up on the land as far as I know you can't change the color of the seal submarine but you know i might just be missing something or something so if you can change the color and i'm just missing something feel free to let me know but yeah that is the seal submarine coming in at number one on this list because i really like giant vehicles in this game and the seal submarine really scratched that itch it scratches it perfectly actually because it's super customizable as well on the inside if you had some different thoughts than me feel free to share in the comments below and we can talk about it because that is 100 fine if you may have a different opinion you know we all have different opinions on stuff and that's what makes conversations interesting and other than that that is what i have for y'all thank you all for watching i will see y'all in the next one peace